to judicial affairs, this the start of restorative justice has totally rejuvenated me in terms of my career. Um, as, as people in the field know, we're turning much more since Virginia Tech into legalistic liability uh, threat assessment. Restorative justice is just giving me a chance to interact with students, staff, and community. The biggest thing I found is we were sorely lacking in victim uh, engagement and involvement in our process, almost completely offender focused. Uh, so we were missing half of the people we could influence and change. Uh, the restorative justice process just has worked beautifully. Um, I found that students will rise to the occasion if given the opportunity, and they can, you can role model uh, the, the right way to talk to each other and deal with conflict, and the hope is that they'll learn from it and do it in the future. This um, conference and symposium in many ways for me has been the point where what, what is the future of restorative justice at JMU? And really up until this, this uh, conference, I felt that if there's something, whatever happened to me or I would leave, that would be the end of restorative justice at JMU. So this is now the point where there was 20 JMU staff who went to the symposium and 10 who went to this training. And I can tell you, I can tell during the symposium and the training, they are so excited. They are dying to implement things. Uh, they want to collaborate together. Uh, kind of some of our offices that we never had before. Uh, to offer support as facilitators for judicial affairs, but to work together to implement it in student development, fraternity and sorority life, the health center, the alcohol substance abuse education programs. Um, again, I see it moving all over campus. Uh, we have one of our members who works closely with orientation and said, I want to use my time with the 4,000 students who come in to introduce them to this model, this harms, needs, obligations model. Um, and again, that is huge that we can start influencing every freshman and every student who goes to JMU, introduce them to restorative justice, and then for them to see it across campus consistently the right way, taught by the experts and the grandfather in the field. Uh, so it is just so inspiring and exciting, I think, what's going to happen at JMU. And I can't wait to report back where we are next year because it's going to be a big change. Howard Zare has just become like a mentor to me. Um, it started when every book, when I first took a class, I started getting every book I could, could in the EMU library and online on restorative justice, and his name is everywhere. You cannot pick up a book on restorative justice without seeing Howard Zare. But just having him in the class, he is just, to me, the type of person and professional uh, I want to be in my life. He is so humble, such humility, um, and you know he lets he role models restorative justice and circle processes in the way he teaches and the way he lives constantly. Uh, and God, just being around around him, it rubs off. I hope to some. So I hope to bring that back to JMU and in my practices.